I would say, I don't know, my secret is I think I love surfing more than everybody else around me. I just, I, I would go to bed sleeping, thinking about it, dreaming about it, waking up wanting to do it, yeah. imagining how I'd ride a wave, imagining how somebody else would and how it feels in my body. Yeah. I was just so obsessive about it because I loved it so much. You know, I came from a broken home, so I think psychologically that has something to do with it. I think that, you know, you, you feel like you gotta go prove yourself or make some statement or something to make yourself feel good. I also had an older brother who, you know, would try to outdo me at everything, so that was like a hyper competitive thing for me too. So there's a certain dynamic that that was that the energy around me allowed me to find something that I was best at, you know, yeah. that I was better at than anything else I would have done. Yeah. You guys have said I don't know is really an extension of, of you and what what's hmm. been your favorite part of the past um, couple years? Gosh, just to be in the position to be able to to do something like this, think it up and make it become reality is is a pretty great feeling. But um, favorite part, just just seeing the, the parts moving together and and uh, you know putting on a piece of clothing that you made. And I, I, I guess the, my favorite, my the best feeling about it to me is knowing where and how the clothes are made, who's building it, and that we've done a good job. And you know, because like social compliance is a real uh, foundation for the brand for me, you know, treating people right, working with the right people. Um, so I think, I think to, to uh, be able to say, hey, here's what it's made out of, here's who made it, here's where it's made, it, you know, we're proud of the whole process, we're, we're happy to be transparent with that. I would say in, in my past a, a, that hasn't been the case with uh, a lot of things I've worked with. I just felt like I had an obligation and responsibility to do things the right way. What, uh, I'll, I'll ask some stuff about the wave pool. You didn't ride the first wave of it, so, I mean, we all know that, but you saw the first wave, you know, well, when you saw the first wave with your own eyes, like, what did, what, what were the first things that went through your head? Um, I mean, it was really emotional. I mean, I was looking at it, we just created the most perfect barreling wave you could ever imagine. You know, the only thing that you could say about it is, let's make it bigger. But, I mean, you, you could sit in the barrel for 30 seconds, and it's just unbelievable. Um, so, you, you know, we're, we're creating the longest barrel you, you'll ever get in your lifetime. And I'm sitting there watching that thing peel at me. And at the same time, I was thinking, like, I don't know, in some weird sense, like, for surfers, is this like a nuclear bomb? Like, is this something we shouldn't have? Like, should we have this? Should we not have this? Like, how do you use it in the right way? What's the responsible way to do this? You know, I mean, all those things did flood through my head um, in that sense. You know. Huh? Favorite musicians? That's such a hard one. I don't know. I mean, my, my, my all-time favorite is Stevie Wonder. I mean, I love Stevie Wonder. Uh, I mean, I could, li I could probably listen to Stevie Wonder the rest of my life and be happy, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I have a pretty varied, probably as anyone does, but pretty varied. I mean, I love... Uh, Aretha Franklin and Ella Fitzgerald, you know, I, I love Bell X1 or Little Dragon or Outkast or, you know, so Outkast probably my all-time favorite rap group, you know. Um, actually, Andre 3000 just started surfing a couple years ago, too. Oh, really? Yeah. I just met him recently, but he's like all into surfing. But, um, I don't know. I mean, we always have an album that's our favorite at some period in time and it speaks something to our lives, you know. I remember in, in like 98 I was traveling around with Shane Dorian and we were just listening to this rap, this rap group called Lox yeah. and, and Mace and bad, that's all bad we, Mace. bad, bad, bad boy. boy stuff and that's, <laughs> and I swear for like that whole year that's all we listened to. But, but then all I listened to that year was, was that and Jeff Buckley. Like how do those two things go together, you know. And, and they were equally as important to that period of my life for some reason, you know? The messaging or the sound or, you know, I mean. I was just listening to 24 Hours to Live by Mace. Remember that Yeah. One? With, with the locks were featured yeah. in that song. I was going for a run. Just think, I, I where would you go? go what would you do? Who, Who would, would you screw? You screw? <laughs> Who would you want to notify? <laughs> or would you have to deny that your eyes about to die? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. But Shane and I used to listen to that and then go surf and we'd just be so amped, you know? And then at night I'd drink a bottle of red wine and listen to Jeff Buckley and cry by myself <laughs> in the corner, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Emotional roller coaster. I used yeah. to wear my hat. You remember Mace used to, he used to wear his backwards hat? I wouldn't, I, 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 I wouldn't admit to that. I don't know about that. <laughs>